the laws that changed, which affected me, came directly out of the Reagan Bush. But when Bush started running for president, when he started campaigning for president in 88, everything that really impacted me came out of the, the um, laws uh, where the conspiracy statute was completely massaged, which caused every single one of us that are in federal prison were there for conspiracy. And if the conspiracy, st I mean, I didn't get a mandatory minimum, and there's a lot of attention on mandatory minimums, but a mandatory minimum doesn't come into play in a federal case until after conspiracy hooks you in. You're indicted for conspiracy, and conspiracy means you know, you mail a FedEx package, and if you don't know what's in that FedEx package, and you mail it for a friend, you can get a 10-year mandatory minimum for mailing a FedEx package, and Tanya Drake was in prison with us for doing just that. Clinton doesn't have the record. Um, Bush Jr. has the record. Yeah, because everybody trumps one um, another. When Clinton left office, there was about a million people in prison. By the time Bush left, there were 2.5 million, right. ar arguably up to 3 million, right. and up to mm -hmm. 8 million on correctional supervision. I think that was a, at the apex of it. And over the last two years, the prison population has slightly decreased hmm. because Michigan let loose a bunch of right. inmates. Mm -hmm. California was ordered to let 40,000 out, oh, and they mean, still yeah. have managed to keep that system going. In fact, they've appealed it to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court's going to hear it. So... It seems like it is a true quagmire that no matter what we do, we sink deeper and deeper and deeper. Well, money is involved and jobs and the prison union is invested. Somebody said they went to, um, uh, it wasn't Cochrane, but it was some federal prison and there was a sign in the waiting room and it said three strikes means um, job security. And for the prison union, um, three strikes is literally job security for them because what happens is there's, there used to be almost an equal number of people that would finish their sentence and leave prison to the people coming into the system. But now that doors have been shut, nobody exits prison and people just keep coming in. And, you know, you might exit when you're 70 or 80 years old, and then I don't know what you're supposed to do at that stage. But um, they're not going to let, their talons are in this thing, and they're not going to let loose. And they'll uh, manipulate the media any way they can. They want everyone to think that everybody in prison is a child molester, a raper, a violent person, and that just isn't the case. Are you aware of the number of drug traffickers that George Herbert Walker Bush pardoned at the end of his one term? Did you have any, or have you since learned about any of this? George Bush Sr.? Yes. Um, well, I know that... Aside from Ollie North and Secord, yeah. who trafficked all the cocaine to fund the contra operation. I definitely know that he granted some for some pretty big drug traffickers. Yes. And that was bizarre because he was the one that, um, and because I'm working on this documentary, I've actually gone in and um, asked for some footage from the Bush senior speeches and in the State of the Union address, and then he also gave a speech in the Oval Office where he was asking for the death penalty. For drug traffickers. Yeah. And he said that this would be for kingpins. Um, but uh, I don't even think that many kingpins end up in prison, uh, frankly. And I know the CIA, well, we don't want to go there because everybody screams conspiracy theorists, but... Um, but that's, if it's ridiculous. There's some operatives. There are definitely some operatives who are huge kingpins who know how to curry favor with whether it's the CIA or another government agency in this country, and they're overlooked. But it well, really... I mean, I'll give you that as the, mm -hmm. as the softball answer. I mean, the fact is, is I could put a stack of books on that table right now that shows how the CIA has been directly involved, mm -hmm. in fact, even overseeing controlling the drug trade for almost 60 years. Right. How they've used drugs mm -hmm. to fund revolutionary mm -hmm. armies, 
in all Absolutely. corners of the world. Absolutely. And it's an absolute proven fact. It's been, it is. It's been documented endlessly, and we are still dithering about this being a so-called conspiracy theory. Well, it's not a conspiracy theory um, because, um, and I have, again, collector of articles, mm -hmm. I have an um, article when I was in prison where the CIA actually admitted that once a ton, over a ton of cocaine had come into this country, they admitted that they lost it, that it was supposed to be evidence used in a sting or whatever, but they had somehow lost it. And the reason why they admitted it was apparently it was going to come out in a 60 Minutes probe anyway, and they thought that they, they had might as well just go ahead and admit that it happened. <coughs> but those uh, kind of uh, never get any traction. But um, There's a, a federal civil case that was brought by a, it's class action suit by DEA agents who had their jobs, careers, and their reputations compromised or ruined because they were following drug mm -hmm. leads and the CIA was involved with the drug traffickers and involved in the trade mm -hmm. and they end up screwing all their lives and Sally Castino and Michael Levine are only Michael two of, of just a, a scads of these. The federal court records are sealed. You can't ever look at what happened in this civil case. I mean. You know, if, if anyone ever wants to read the best single source on the whole thing, they should read White Out by Alexander Coburn and Jeffrey Sinclair. It's one of the scariest books I've ever read. When I was in federal prison, a bookmobile would come to the prison and we could put in our requests. And I read every single one of Michael Levine's books. And not only what. Not only was it just, uh, you know, an incredible education, but it just makes you all the more frustrated that when you've lost your life and you're doing time and this whole thing is just a huge joke on Joe Q taxpayer um, and the people who want to feel comfortable that, you know, um, that their tax dollars are somehow going for some kind of noble cause. Um, it makes it all the more hard to do time, you know, to serve 24 years and hear about how these kingpins have gone scot-free, and a lot of them are on the payroll. A lot of them actually, you know, as long as they keep feeding the right people information, um, um, they, get, um, they get perks and proceeds from some of the property that's forfeited. But. Mm -hmm.